Welcome back, listener. Thanks for pressing play today. In today's episode of Nerdistology, you're going to find me, Irvin, doing an episode talking about a movie that just dropped, talking about Black Widow with our girl ScarJo starring. Did I like it? Did I not like it? I'll give you my review, my thoughts. But before we get into that, please head over to Apple Podcasts, drop that five star, tell your friends, family, and coworkers about us. Help me grow this audience. Thank you so much. All right, that said, here's the intro song. What's going on, my nostalgites? Welcome back to another episode of Nerd Nostalgia Podcast. Thank you for joining me today. I know you could have been anywhere else, but you're here with me. You're here with your boy, Irvin. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate it from the bottom of my heart, genuinely. Let's talk about Black Widow. So this past weekend, I went to the movie theaters. What? I know, it's been over a year, roughly, since I've actually thoroughly enjoyed I went by myself not too long ago, maybe three or four months ago, but it was like a year of not going to the movies, and I genuinely missed it. I don't know if you caught the episode where me and the guys were talking about what we missed, and I missed conventions, and we talked about movie theaters and and going and that being an experience and missing that, and that was definitely one of the things I missed. So now it's back, baby. I was invited to go watch Black Widow with a couple of my nerd friends. Sadly, one of us bailed. Shame on you, Gaston. I'm looking at you, Gaston Fitness. Go look him up. Swole personal trainer that will get you in shape if you're in the Houston area. So shout out to you, brother. But shame on you for missing it. But I was able to go with my good friend, Eileen, who is also a big nerd, but went ahead and dressed up as Black Widow. There's actually some pictures that I have. I need to post them on Instagram now that I think about it. But look her up on the old IG. Come on, Eileen. It's C O M E. O-N-A-Y-L-I-N. Her outfit just looked awesome. We got a couple of the signature ScarJo, a.k.a. Black Widow poses right in front of the poster. I wish they had like a bigger poster that they could have done or like, you know, the cardboard cutouts, but they didn't have it at the movie theater we went to, which we also snuck Chick-fil-A into, which was delicious. And again, thank you, Eileen. It was wonderful. Nothing like chicken nuggies and a Marvel movie. Anyways, let's talk about Black Widow. Let's review the old movie. It was not old movie, it's a new movie, but let's review it. So as always, we're going to go over the production, the cast, the plot summary, the ratings and budget, and finally we'll conclude with the most standout, the most nostalgic, the most notable portion of the movie, and finally, my thoughts and conclusion. So without further ado, let's jump into it. Let's talk Black Widow, baby. So this was directed by Kate Shortland. She's an Aussie screenwriter, film director, and TV director and TV writer, eh? She's done a couple of award-winning short films and some Aussie flicks such as Somersault, Love, and, of course, Berlin Syndrome, and naturally, Black Widow. So, yeah. No clue who this director was, had never heard of her before. Uh, Clearly, she's an award-winning film director, so good for her, but I didn't know anything, so this was her first time producing a Marvel-esque movie, so I feel like that's a whole different beast in itself, And, uh, and we'll jump into kind of my thoughts on that here in a bit, but the writers are a little bit more, have a little bit more Marvel background, so let's jump into them. Uh, Jacqueline Schaefer, uh, aka Jack Schaefer. She's done uh, Timer, Olaf's Frozen Adventure, uh, WandaVision, Captain Marvel, which we'll talk about that, uh, The Hustle, and then, of course, Black Widow. Now, an interesting little point here, you had a guy named Ned Benson, which he actually has very little information online or on Wiki specifically, and he was actually replaced by a guy named Eric Peterson. And Eric Peterson, you, you'll you know his work from The Consultant, Agent Carter, Ant-Man, Spider-Man Homecoming, Thor Ragnarok, and several other Marvel movies. So the writing, I will say, was... It was okay. Pretty much the theme of this movie was it was okay. Uh, a lot of predictability in this. So I don't know who had the bigger hand in that, but yeah. Anyways... Let's jump into the cast. The cast is actually pretty solid. I love the cast. I think everybody who was picked 
was perfectly chosen. Starting off, kicking us off with number one, none other than our Black Widow, the woman that caught our hearts in Iron Man 2, Scar Jo. Uh, I mean, what else can you say? No, no further intro needed. She's a delight. She's beautiful. Uh, she's our Black Widow. I mean, it's awesome. Yeah, continuing on. We have David Harbour uh, as Alex. Anyways, the Red Guardian. You'll know him from Stranger Things. He was also the unsuccessful Hellboy, but, you know, he was in that. And uh, a few other things as well along the line. But he was the Red Guardian. He's your comic relief for a lot of the movie. And then we have Olga Krlinka as Antonia Dreykov. And we'll, I won't spoil that, but that's who she was. Then we have William Hart as Thaddeus Ross. Ray Winstone as Dreykov, a.k.a. Antonia's dad. And then finally, or actually not finally, we have Rachel Weiss, the beautiful, lovely Rachel Weiss. That is Brian's, one of Brian's favorite actresses. He always loved her. He talks about it. He probably doesn't remember it, but that is... And then Melina as Melino Vostokov, a.k.a. an older Black Widow. Several Black Widows here. They're just a dime a dozen in this movie. Anyways, from there we move on to the final one. The person that I absolutely loved during this movie. Both comic relief, badassery, and just overall a cool character arc. You had Florence Pugh, a.k.a. Yelena Blova, or our future Black Widow. But we'll get it more into that here in a second. So now that we have the list of characters... What like what happens? What do these characters do? Like what is the plot, right? So this is a spoiler-free plot. Uh, it's just going to be talking very high level, and then giving you my thoughts on the movie or overall. So hopefully this serves as a tipping point for you, whether you're going to go to the movie theater and watch it, which you should support that industry again. You know they were hurting there for a while. Obviously during quarantine, everything was shut down. So and shout out to AMC because uh, my stock went through the roof and I sold, 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 baby. So made a, a cool buck off that. So thank you very much, Reddit. Anyways, let's talk about the plot. So this movie is actually set right after the events of Captain America Civil War. But before the movie actually begins, it, it's going to take you to the greatest era uh, ever. It's going to take you to the 90s, baby, with Blockbuster, the best TV shows, and of course, millions upon millions of comics being created. It's taking you to the 90s, man, that nostalgia. I loved that little bit of it. Obviously, this is a nostalgia podcast, so or it has the name in it, at least. We rarely talk about nostalgia. We need to get on that. I need to get on that. Anyways, so it actually starts off in some podunk town in Ohio with an 11, maybe 12-year-old Natasha and a 5- to 6-year-old Yelena kind of playing, doing regular kid stuff. And, of course, their air quotes here. You can't see what I'm doing, but I'm doing air quotes. Their parents, Alexi and Melina, well, this, fi- this you come to find out this family is posing as just a regular American purebred Western civilization family for three years, but turns out there are some sleeper cells. So kind of a spoiler, but not really a spoiler. So at dinner, you find out that they complete their mission. They gain some intel from S.H.I.E.L.D., specifically Alexi did, and they just flee. They pack up for the most part. They don't even take shoes, and they head to Cuba where they meet Drekov, General Drekov, and they're all split apart. That was kind of a little heart-wrenching film or portion scene there. But uh, yeah, they're split apart. Then it fast-forwards you a decade or so where Natasha is... She's basically switched sides. She's um, defected, as they say, in the spy world. Shout out to my FBI agent that listens to my podcast. You know, definitely increase. Please tell your friends, family, and coworkers about us, man. We, we would love to grow it. Uh... Don't mind those dirty texts I was sending that girl. No big deal. Don't worry about those. I hope you enjoyed, you know, the ones that she sent. But anyways, <laughs> just a little conspiracy theory joke there, guys. I don't actually believe that I have my own personal FBI agent that monitors everything I say and watch. But, you know, just in case, shout out to you, bro. Or bro it, whatever. So back to Black Widow. It's fast forwarded about a decade. Natasha, aka our future Black Widow, has defected at this point. And she, her task is to kill Dreykov, and in turn, she has to kill the daughter, because that's the only way that she will know that he's in the actual building. So, she's kind of collateral damage, and it's something that, quote-unquote, air quote, haunts her uh, through the rest of her life. 
but not really because we never see it, but kind of see it, but kind of don't. You see it in the movie, but you don't see it in the other stuff because obviously this movie happened six years too late, but we'll get into that here in a bit. The movie then fast forwards to an almost present time, takes you back to 2016, right after the events of Captain America Civil War, where Natasha, if you remember, attacked uh, the Black Panther and let uh, Steve get away with Bucky and all that, which one of the best movies ever written, in my opinion. If I think Winter Soldier is probably one of my favorite movies, but Civil War is definitely up there as well. So, like your typical spy thriller, a package is sent to the sister, our main character, our protagonist, Natasha Romanoff. I love saying her name. It's sent to Black Widow from who? Well, from the sister. Something happens in the beginning that uh, kind of throws everything into motion. From there, the taskmaster, the poser, I should say. But anyways, the taskmaster, that's where the movie begins and it goes into full swing into full kickoff mode. And since this is a spoiler-free review, I'm going to go ahead and stop there. The movie kicks off from there. Lots of action, lots of funny quips, and overall just a fun House of Mouse movie. But let's talk about the budget a little bit. So this movie came in with a $200 million budget, which is pretty hefty. It made 158 at the box office this weekend. So the fact that it... You know, we're like kind of fully back, but not fully back as far as COVID is concerned. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. So all in all, this movie should make most of that money back if it already hasn't and definitely come into profits at some point. It is sitting at a 7 out of 10 on IMDb, 81% on Rotten Tomatoes, 68% Metacritic, 90% Google, and the most important rating of all, 7 out of 9 Ewoks, which lands it right around 7.6 to 7.8 range. So it's a good movie. Um, Overall, it's not a great movie. Um, Yeah. Let's let's talk about the most notable part of this movie, why I didn't rate this movie higher. It's it's easily Yelena. Yelena Belova, a.k.a. our future Black Widow, is... She steals the movie. Every scene she's in, it's, it's her scene. Even the one, sadly, with ScarJo. But... The reason I think that was an on-purpose thing, because I think this movie ended up, it went from me thinking it was going to be a spy thriller, which it's not, to a passing of the torch flick. But um, yeah, Yelena was the best part. She's beautiful. She's funny. She's badass. It's not forced down your throat like in other movies like Captain Marvel, and I'll probably repeat that again because... That movie was just awful. It sits at one of the worst Marvel movies ever made, in my opinion. But I digress. Throughout the movie, they show you that Yelena is as good, if not better, than the Black Widow. Which, again, it's I think it was written on purpose. This was kind of a, uh, a send-off, a swan song, if you will, for ScarJo. They show you a vulnerable side to her, an emotional side. And, uh, you know, she kind of gets to sail away in the sunset in this one. Right away in the sunset, if you will. Even though we ultimately know her end, but a uh, lot, a lot of, a lot of good moments there. A lot of sisterhood type of stuff, and I think that serves the girl power, the feminism, the you know you can do it movement for the women, and uh, with without shoving it down your throat, without telling you they're badass, more than showing you they're badass. Being a vulnerable woman, but yet strong enough to carry a fucking gun and hit you in the mouth and take some punches, which you'll see. But at the same time, the reason I didn't rate this movie higher was because it was it was a very predictable movie. Everything that they kind of tie in. Well, let's let's jump into it. Let's jump into my thoughts and conclusion here. So, the, the House of Mouse, you know, it, it doesn't reinvent the wheel with this movie. Um, this flick is is I was hoping it would be a spy thriller, um, less of the cheesy superhero cliche stuff. But they do it. They kind of mix the two. With it obviously leaning towards the superhero. Overall, the movie's just okay. Like it, it's not. It's good. It's not great. Kind of sits in the middle of the pack, um, being on on the latter half of that pack. But Yelena Belova, the Black Widow, um, or future Black Widow, I should say, and then Florence Pugh, that's the actress, uh, being the best part of the movie just by far. Steals every scene. It's beautiful to watch. Um, however, 
again, there's an on-purpose thing. It, it's a passing of the torch movie. It's a send-off for Scar Joe. So you're going to want to write the supporting cast, in this case, Elena, as a better character so the audience can relate to her and will want to see her in the future, which we do, which I do, which I'm excited for. And in the post credit scene, it actually ties into the Disney Plus show, Disney Plus shows, I should say, one that's already aired and then one that's going to happen in the future. And I won't spoil that for you because I think it's going to be a very interesting uh, show and just a really interesting dynamic. And I think that show is going to be bigger than what people are anticipating it to be. And if you must know what show that is and you haven't seen a movie, go to my very first post ever on Instagram and you'll see what show I'm discussing. So while this movie sits at a 7.6, 7.8 for me, um, that, that's mainly because of the predictability. There's a lot of uh, plot points that I was like, that's going to tie back in, that's going to tie back in, this is going to happen, this is going to happen throughout the entire movie. And whenever they did the super cheesy stuff, it was just unnecessary. They, they could have had such a good movie had they not done the cheesy stuff. Had they just given you an action spy thriller, it would have been amazing. But... They decided to. Um, I love the funny quips. That's always good. I think they stole that, you know, like Thor Ragnarok is probably one of the best movies for formulating that. I think that was, you know, when Thor's character really switched over and and had those funny one-liners. Maybe even Guardians. Guardians might have been James Gunn stuff. But anyways, I digress. I love Yelena. She was awesome. She was badass. ScarJo even is still badass, even even showing you that vulnerability side. It's, um, It's a movie that didn't force it like they do in Captain Marvel. You know, you feel empowered as a woman as I went with a woman we kind of discussed with what she felt and she's like I felt awesome you know like I feel empowered like I can do anything while at the same time being vulnerable enough to show my emotions and stuff which I think that's the perfect balance that you got to find for your female characters we've come a long way from Iron Man 2 where we used to just throw her titties and her ass in our face which number one was awesome but uh you know a little unnecessary but I mean necessary but not necessary I think there's a good balance of tasteful showcasing that and uh, without like just it being too much. So another reason that I think this movie was not as good as it should have been was because the character of Taskmaster was written so poorly. I everybody you you I'm not even going to jump into it just because everybody across the board is talking about it. So if you want to go find out, go look up Taskmaster, just Google it, and you'll see that it's not the character's origin. They basically just kind of borrowed some aspects of it and kind of have the character looking like it. I'm hoping there's going to be a real Taskmaster, that this was like a borrowed interpretation, like maybe they came across the real Taskmaster and stole the idea from that, but likely not. I think this is going to be the real version. It's just they didn't give you a lot of depth to this character. And the outfit change, I didn't mind too much. Um, It's a little, little off, but I think it just matched the modern times. So I didn't mind that too much. But I 100% predicted who it was going to be within one scene. I was like, oh, that's who that is. Again, I had a, a great time watching this movie. It was it was a fun flick. It's worth going to watch in the movie theaters, I think. Also, you could easily watch it with five or six people at your house if you have you know a big movie theater room or just a big TV with loudspeakers. I think you'd still get the, the same effect. Um I just enjoyed going to the movie theater with a friend and uh, number one, having her dress up as Black Widow. I think I thought that was cool. I was like, what? You dressed up? I was wearing my Punisher shirt and uh, it was actually her birthday and I gave her some comic books. Harley Quinn and Punchline are a couple of her favorite characters. So I gave her some autographed ones. I gave her Punchline cameos, uh, first cover appearance, that kind of stuff. Oh, and a knife since she paid for Chick-fil-A and snuck it in. I gave her, uh, I gave her a knife because she didn't have one. Or a real one, I should say. So I actually need to order a new one. But I enjoyed the experience. Um, Something about going to the movies that's just an amazing American pastime. I don't think it's going anywhere for everybody that says the movie industry is dead. I don't think so. I think it's going to get modified. I think some of the ridiculous prices have to go down. You know, $4 or $5 for a fucking drink is ridiculous, AMC. So I uh, I think some things have to change. Prices have to go down. I think the way that they do movies, you know, renting out the theaters. I think that might be the future approach, but I digress. That's a topic for another story. 
We are done with the review, guys. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. Please, 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 please head over to Apple Podcasts. Drop that five star. Tell your friends, family, and coworkers about us. Help us grow this audience. Help me grow this audience. If you don't have an iPhone, steal somebody's iPhone. I know they don't steal their iPhone, but like borrow their iPhone. Go to podcast. Drop the five star. Subscribe. All that kind of jazz, right? We're also on Spotify, Google, all of it. Also, find us on social media. Chat with us. I love bonding with you guys. Chatting over anything. Slide in the DMs. Comment on our posts. Um, you'll find me on Instagram, nerd.nostalgia. Facebook is Nerd Nostalgia Nation. It's a private group, but just search for it. We'll, we'll accept you. We're on the TikTok. We're on the Twitter, but our primary one is going to be uh, Instagram. So that's it, guys. That's the review. Tell me what you think in the comments. Love to hear back from you guys. I hope you have a wonderful week. And remember, stay nerdy, my friends.